As a ham radio operator and a long-time shortwave listener, I've often been disappointed with the quality of portable radios that cover the shortwave band, uh, particularly from the standpoint of their ability to detect single sideband, be stable, uh, be sensitive and selective and so on. But technology now uh, has come a long, long way. A lot of these radios use digital signal processing and or their SDR, software-defined radios, and they've come a long way, as I said. And this one is a good example. This is the Eaton Elite Executive uh, portable radio. It covers long wave, medium wave, short wave uh, with single sideband, uh, and it does it very well, I must say. Um, and also FM with RDS, something you'd normally find on a car radio. But as well, it covers the VHF aircraft band. So we're going to look at the various bands on this, see how it performs. So let's get into it. Let's start out by looking at the shortwave performance. So what I'm about to show you are some tests I did on single sideband only. I didn't actually look at the performance um, on shortwave broadcast bands, but I must say it's it's very good performance, um, and you can simply access each of the bands by hitting each of these F buttons. The most popular uh, uh, shortwave broadcast bands, and you can also by pushing and holding either this button or the one below it, you can uh, have it scan through the bands until it finds something that's strong enough to to listen to. The one good thing about uh, these radios is they now include digital signal processing, so they're able to implement uh, bandwidth filters. And bandwidth filters are something you want to use when you've got adjacent channel interference, so you want to narrow the, the bandwidth of the receiver. Or if there's just excessive noise and you want to reduce the noise and just listen to the, the voice content. So let's have a look at that short wave performance. Let's compare the Eaton radio with a classic general coverage receiver, which is the Yesu FRG7700, seen there on the left. And you notice that I've set up the uh, rod antennas or the telescoping antennas on both so that they are the same length. So it should be a, a fair competition. So here's, uh, here's the single sideband performance of the Eaton, and then we'll compare it with the FRG7700 uh, receiver in a moment. Just one thing to note, in the manual they tend to give you the impression that pushing this button, which is SYNC SSB, will turn the radio into a single sideband uh, mode. But we'll push that and watch what happens. It says SYNC USB and it and it sounds that's absolutely horrible. I was ready to send the radio back at that point when I heard that. But let's push it again. And now if we push the button above it, which switches between upper and lower sideband, uh, we'll wait until some there somebody starts talking there. And, okay. That's the mode that it should be in, not sync SSB. That is, that is meant to improve AM reception where the signal is fading in and out. But uh, it, even then, it sounds horrible. So just avoid using that for going into single sideband mode. Just hit this button up here immediately, uh, and uh, then you can toggle between the two modes. Now, one other thing. Uh, we can fine-tune this. You notice we're, we're going in, we go to slow mode, we're going in one kilohertz steps. Now I can fine-tune that just by pushing the tuning control in. Okay, I've changed frequency now because they stopped talking on the other frequency. Let's go into fine. Uh, you really 
So you can only tune in one kilohertz step, so the, this is this fine tuning acts like a clarifier on a single sideband radio. Very nice feature. Just comparing now the uh, the Yesu FRG seventy seven hundred with some some weak signals in the background. And the Eaton tuned to the same frequency. The Eaton has very uh, no, no big deal. It's a straight shot. The roads here are very straight, very straight. In fact, even better in terms of intelligibility, I would say, than the Yesu at times. So a very impressive single sideband receiver. Uh, when I used to travel uh, to Florida, either to uh, a visit. Well, because this is a DSP-based uh, receiver, it tends to do what pretty well all of the DSP receivers do is uh, something called chuffing. That is, when you change frequency, it you get that sort of burst of noise. It's a bit annoying. It uh, kind of discourages you from doing what I'm doing now, which is just sort of tuning around. It's not as much fun as with an analog radio. But there you go. It's just a characteristic of DSP receivers. Let's compare the Eaton radio with uh, a single sideband transceiver, which is the ICOM IC703 on an external antenna that is uh, tuned or resonant in the 20 meter band. So we're now dealing with an external antenna. Let's just pan over here. You'll see we're, we're plugged into the side of the receiver and it's going through a, a switch that I'm going to switch back and forth between the two radios and we can compare signals. So hopefully these guys are still talking. Kind of a strong. That's the icon. And there's the beaten. So we're listening to a relatively weak signal now on the icon. Let's switch over to the Eaton. Just as good, if not better, which is amazing. Uh, note that the preamp is not on on the ICOM, so we're hopefully on an even playing field here. That's the so they may be about equivalent in terms of intelligibility. Back to the Eaton. Can also change the bandwidth. So, pretty impressive performance from the Eaton. Next up is medium wave, or as we know it, AM broadcast performance. Now you notice I'm, I've skipped over long wave. Uh, here in North America, uh, there's very little, if anything, to hear on long wave anymore. There's certainly no broadcasts uh, like there are in Europe. And getting a European station from here is very, very difficult, if not near impossible. Um, so the only thing left on long wave that's, that, that you can tune in are what's called non-directional beacons. And these are beacons at aircraft that have been used uh, to assist in navigation uh, uh, to help pilots know when they're, they're near uh, the airport runway. Uh, here in Canada, Transport Canada has been taking those NDBs out. So there's actually really 
next to nothing, if nothing, depending on the area you're in, uh, to here on, on the long wave bands. So instead, we'll just jump right over to medium wave or the AM broadcast band and uh, compare its performance with that of another receiver. Okay, let's look at, uh, at AM or medium wave performance now compared with the County Comms GP5 SSB uh, receiver, which I believe is the same as a, a Texan 365 or something like that. So this, this, uh, this radio, this County Comms radio, comes with an external ferrite uh, tunable or rotatable antenna to get the best, uh, res uh, the best reception, I guess, on uh, both AM and on, uh, on long wave as well. It says 150 to, to 1710 kilohertz. So let's just compare the performance on this particularly weak station. It's coming in from Quebec, which is a long way off. Uh, so the language is French. We're not actually receiving France here. So let's uh, give a listen on the, the county comms first. You can hear the signal. And you can see there's, there's a null there. And that's as strong as it is. And you can barely make out what they're saying, really, apart from language. So if we go on the Eaton, it's quite, uh, you know, quite intelligible. You can understand what they're saying. So I think uh, the Eaton actually has a bit of a, a an advantage over the, the GP5 SSB. Uh, this is a fairly sensitive receiver. It's very annoying, though, to have to tune only with the thumb wheel. I understand they've come out with a more recent one that has direct frequency entry, but uh, it takes forever to get anywhere with this particular radio in terms of uh, the frequency that you want. So there you have it. There's a, a comparison on AM between the County Comms GP5 and the Eaton, I think I know which one I would take with me if I was traveling, and that would be the Eaton. As I stated at the uh, outset of this video, this receiver also has uh, FM with RDS, or radio data system, that you often find in uh, vehicle radios. And that's handy for determining, first of all, what the station ID is if they're not announcing it, or through a, you know a, a scrolling uh, display, it will tell you what music is playing. But there's also um, another uh, piece of data that's that's often but not always broadcast on RDS, and that is the time. Um, so just to go back, in terms of performance uh, on the FM side, this receiver is excellent. Um, and if you plug in a set of headphones, the the audio is is really really nice, and uh, of course you can you can select between stereo and mono. If you've got a a fringe area station and it's it's a bit noisy in stereo, you can switch to mono and so on, and you can switch RDS in fact on and off. But one thing I want to show you, I'm not going to show you FM performance, but I'm going to show you an odd um, feature that's built into this radio that concerns setting the clock in the radio to the RDS of a local station. So let's get into that. So there's two ways that you can set the clock on this radio. Basically when the radio is off, uh, select and hold page time and it will give you hour and you push page time again it will give you minutes and then you can control it with uh, with the tuning dial. Um, so next parameter is RDS Auto or Manual. So Manual just means whatever you set, the way I just showed you, uh, will show up on the clock. If you go RDS Auto, what it'll do is t uh, take the time information off of the radio station, uh, if they're actually transmitting in RDS, and it will... Uh, it will update the clock accordingly. So let's go on to FM here. Well, let's turn it on first. 
Okay, and we're on a station that's got some RDS information. Now the time is is actually around 1519. You can see this station just updated and their time is wrong. It's, it says 1615. And if we change stations, sorry, if we change stations now to this one, after a while you'll see because they don't transmit the time continuously apparently that time will update so now this station a different station is giving a different time again 1521 but again this is in by setting it the time setting to RDS auto so it's not a not a setting that I would recommend it's uh, depends very much on whether or not the individual radio stations have properly set their time so next we're going to move up in frequency beyond the FM band and uh, look at a, a band that this radio also covers called the aircraft band. And this allows you to hear uh, conversations between the tower and uh, an aircraft uh, in the band of 117 to 137 megahertz. Now in previous times um, uh, I've had portable receivers that where they threw in this aircraft band feature and uh, it uh, really wasn't very good. The sensitivity was, was terrible. Uh, so I didn't have very high hopes when it came to purchasing this Eaton receiver. I thought, well, it's just another sort of afterthought and uh, the uh, sensitivity is going to be, be awful on it, but uh, boy, was I wrong. And I'll, I'll show you that in this next little segment coming up. Notice that I've uh, attached uh, the same kind of telescopic whip to my ham radio transceiver, which is a Yaesu FT60. And the FT60 has airband on it as well. In fact, it covers a large part of uh, the VHF, UHF spectrum in general coverage form. So we're, we're comparing apples to apples here. So we're tuned uh, to both radios, both the, uh, the Yaesu FT60, uh, which is, again is a ham radio transceiver with general coverage, covers the airband as well. So we're, we're tuned to a local um, airport, which, about, which is about 10 kilometers away, and this is their uh, airport information uh, frequency. And you can hear them both at the current time. Let's just listen to the Yesu for a moment. A little noisy, a little bit of noise in the background. And I, I think the, uh, the Eaton sounds just as good, if not better, and which, which is astounding that uh, Yesu and uh, ICOM and, and uh, make, makers like that usually have very sensitive receivers. So for this Eaton to compare well, if not better, with this on the airband is uh, is quite an accomplishment. 4,100 overcast, temperature minus 8, dew point minus 1, 1, altimeter 3018, IFR approach, RNAV, runway 09. Jack Ross, you're good to answer by direct, maintain 4,000, hold east on inbound track of 270. And expect further clearance two zero 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 light speed your scratch. Very nice sounding radio on even on the airband. And you can change the the filter band width as well to anything you like. Now there's another feature called uh, squelch. So if I push in and hold the uh, rotary dial, I can turn whoops. Oh. And EFC, uh, Jack Oscar Rebeck is correct. Let me know when you're uh, ready to start the approach. Uh, we'll report when uh, ready to start the first call check out. So it, uh, it flash, uh, flashes squelch at you. Uh, Rosie says this crew contact 09. Contact 09, Rosie 76. Rosie 76, uh, you can contact Leonard Tower now on 1194. Good day. So I've set a, to a squelch level of two, and it will flash at me. If I push and hold again, 
rotate it. I can turn it off completely or just set it to some other level. By the way, the squelch will, will work on any of the bands, so that includes the FM band, includes the air band, uh, AM, and shortwave as well. So just a couple of comments before we end this. Uh, this radio does come with uh, an AC adapter, and it's, it's used for charging through this port here, as well as running the radio. Although, I must say that um, using it with the power supply and, and listening on single sideband, for instance, it does create a little bit of extra noise, like uh, sort of a pumping sound. And I'm not sure if that's because the power supply is uh, switching type or whether it's analog type. The other thing I noticed uh, is that this has become a bit loose and not, not too, after not too long a period of using it. And it kind of comes down to this, this collar here that's, uh, that goes into the radio. So not much you can do about it. I can live with it. By the way, the, the batteries uh, that this uses is three double A's. And for charging, they recommend you use uh, nickel, metal the nickel metal hydride. I think I got that right. NIMH batteries anyway. And they, you do get very good life uh, with those. That's what I've got in this currently. And in order to charge with the external charger, you just press F7 here while the radio is off, and then it says, how long do you want to charge for? And you set the number of hours and so on. So that's uh, about it for the, the general comments on this radio. It also came with, now that I mention it, now that I think of it, I should say, it also came with a kind of a leather cover, and I don't have it in front of me right now, but that cover is meant to protect it while you're traveling, but it's, it's not a very useful uh, case as far as I'm concerned. It literally covers the face of this and it's got these little magnetic uh, uh, catchers on the back that hold it in place. So it, it's good for protecting the radio on the front and the back but not on the sides. And uh, so it's the kind of thing I, I wouldn't use unless I was actually traveling with it. So you do have a headphone jack, a DX local switch, and an antenna port, an external antenna port. So it's uh, quite a versatile radio. And you can also uh, put a, you know, record by using the line out, or you can put an MP3 in here and listen to it on this speaker. I'm not quite sure why you'd want to do that. But uh, anyway, it's a very, very versatile radio. As I said earlier, the technology's come a long way on portable radios. I'm not saying but this one is the one and only. Uh, there's companies like Texan, uh, T-E-C-S-U-N, or Sangian, Sangian, however it's pronounced, that produce radios with very similar performance. I just happen to uh, like the price on this one. It, it's a little bit cheaper than, than some of the Texans and Sangians. Um, in fact, this one I considered expensive at a retail price level, but I managed to get it uh, for considerably less, like $100 less on Amazon uh, here in Canada. So um, it's, it's, if you're a shortwave listener or you're a, a, a ham radio operator and you just want something to take with you when you travel about, or if you just want to listen to communications while you're in bed or shortwave broadcasts, um, this is a great radio. So check it out. It's the Eaton Elite Executive Portable Radio. Mm -hmm.